The place seemed normal enough at first. Common folk wandering around, attending to their daily tasks. It wasn't until we took a closer look that something seemed off. The lumberjack behind the tavern, pounding away at the stump until it was mere splinters. The innkeeper's wife, carrying buckets of water from the well that were completely empty. The simple, emotionless grin that seemed to be on everyone's face. When we finally did make our way to the inn to find a place to rest for the night, it seemed like the entire town had made their way behind us. They all looked expectantly in our direction, and then we noticed their bodies start to shudder. Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of Dungeons and & Dragons and bring them to light for use in your current 5th edition game. I am your host Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are going to be looking at another creature from 3.5, also found in the 5th edition monster manual just like last week's monster. The Mockery Bugs come in two distinct varieties and I honestly can't decide which one I hate more. First up, we have the Mockery Monarch, who is a giant insect, supposedly derivative of ank eggs, who consumes living humanoids and then births these Mockery Drones. The Mockery Drones are creatures that are insectile on the inside, but appear human on the outside, and that's what makes them so disturbing. They serve the Monarch and, well, I guess I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. We're going to talk all about this and what they do later on in the video. But first, I am going to cover what these guys are capable of in combat, and then we'll go over some plot hooks and some ways you can actually use them in your game. So, let's get right into the thick of it with some... So since there are two different kinds of creature we're talking about in today's video, I'm going to start out by talking about the Mockery Monarch. This creature is really big and is also really slow. It does have a burrow speed, so it's able to go under the ground at the rate of 20 foot per round, which is the same as its walking speed. However, that's pretty much all it has for the way of mobility. In battle, this thing is extremely hard to kill. Not so much because it's extremely dangerous or going to be putting out a ton of damage, it just has very good defensive capabilities. Due to its magical nature and enchanted chitinous plating, it has an ability that allows it to reflect spell attacks back on the person casting it. So if you were to cast an Eldritch Blast or a Scorching Ray, anything that requires a spell attack, it's going to come back and possibly hit you if you're not careful. Granted, the way to get around this is area of effect spell, so if you drop a fireball or some burning hands, cone of cold, whatever, if it affects an area and the creature has to make a save, it will not be able to literally reflect the spell back on the caster. Also, due to this enchanted plating, it has an incredibly high armor class. So those physical attacks might not have a chance of rebounding on you, but it's going to be harder than normal to get them to connect and get through the plating. As far as attacks actually go, it only has one and it is a bite attack. However, the caveat to this attack is that if it does hit you, you are also grappled. And if it manages to grapple you on its next turn as an action, it can use Swallow Hole, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. You are in fact swallowed whole into the belly of this beast. This works essentially the same way as it does for most other big monsters that have the capability of swallowing another creature. The target is ingested inside of the creature and finds themselves in their stomach. And they take acid and bludgeoning damage every turn they spend in there and they can make attacks against the walls of the stomach to try to cut their way out. One thing that is specified here is the stomach can hold up to two medium-sized creatures, and if one of them cuts their way out, the hole only opens up long enough for that creature to get through before muscular action closes the hole back up, so the other creature will have to find their own way out. And of course, any creatures that die, so that are reduced to zero hit points in the belly of a Mockery Monarch, are then converted into Mockery Drones and birthed from the Monarch the next round. It can only use this ability against humanoid creatures, so that's why this being likes to make its lair around other areas that are thick with humanoids, such as on the edges of small towns or villages. It is extremely high intelligence for an insectile creature like this, so it's capable of planning out its attack and deciding where it wants to be and what it wants to do, and it can burrow, so it's very likely to be underground somewhere that's out of sight. Also a strange byproduct of this transformation is that it is able to retain any languages of any creature it consumes. It still doesn't have the ability to speak because it doesn't possess the proper physiology, but it can at least understand any languages spoken to it as long as it's eaten a humanoid creature that also understood that language. 
But moving on to the Mockery Drones, these creatures are pretty disturbing. The Mockery Drone is born looking just like the humanoid that it was before it was swallowed. But it's all a facade. The creature is actually a disgusting centipede-like being with a human face that hides inside of a humanoid body. It might seem like a clone at first glance, but when it's threatened or feels it needs to enter battle for whatever reason, the real insectile creature from within bursts out of the neck of the humanoid creature it was disguised as. And this is where the disturbing factor comes into play. The Mockery Drones are in fact barbed with spikes, so anytime someone makes a melee attack against them, they're going to deal a d10 of damage to that person, which isn't super substantial, but it can add up over time if you're not careful. This of course also means whenever they make a melee attack, it does a little bit of extra piercing damage as well. And of course, these centipede-like drones are much faster than the Monarch, and they also have spider climb, so they're much more mobile. As far as actual attacks go, they have two different options. They can either make a multi-attack with their two claws, or they can spit a 60-foot line of acid. Obviously against a single target, the two claws is going to be the better option because it'll deal a little bit more damage, but the line of acid has potential to hit multiple creatures, which might end up being a better option in very specific situations. These guys are truly disgusting though, so we're going to talk about the biggest strength of this creature, which is how to use them in your game with some... Mockery bugs, specifically the drones, can be a fantastic addition to most horror-themed adventures or storylines. The example I gave at the very beginning of the video about that small town that had been totally overcome by mockery drones would be a really interesting encounter. Imagine the party showing up to some remote village that they happened across on their travels, only to find out everyone had been turned into a mockery drone and the mockery monarch was in the basement of the inn at the center of town. Because that's the thing about the drones, is they're not very smart, not at least compared to the monarch, so they will try to lead people back to the mockery monarch, but they can't really do that very well. See, from the moment that they're born, they have a very confusing life. They're left with all these jumbled scraps of memory from the life that they had previously, and none of it really makes much sense. They just have this drive to serve the monarch and basically lead more humanoid creatures to it. They are smart enough to know when they've been recognized, so usually what they'll end up doing is wandering around until they think someone's recognized them, and then they'll just wander back to wherever the mockery monarch is with the hopes that person will just follow them. And when it comes to speaking, they can speak common or whatever language that group of humanoids spoke before, However, they kind of just repeat nonsensical phrases that they can vaguely remember from their past life. For example, the shopkeeper might just keep on repeating something akin to, here's your change, or weapons are at the back of the store. Something that's totally a non sequitur that no one asked for and that isn't really relevant to the situation. Like in the example I gave of the lumberjack repeatedly pounding away at a stump until it splinters and there's nothing really left. He doesn't really know what he's doing, it's just kind of a weird memory that he has and just feels like this is what he should do if he wants to fit in and look normal. Personally, I think that adds a pretty unsettling and creepy element to this, but if you wanted to, you could do away with that and have them be more intelligent if it fit your story better. They could come out as pretty much clones of that creature that intelligently schemed and tried to lead other creatures back to the Mockery Monarch, but those are two very different styles of adventure, both of which I think would be interesting. It would just be a choice you'd have to make depending on what you wanted to do. Another classic example might be a group of cultists who find the monarch and worship it as some kind of powerful being, or at least hope to use it for some kind of ritual or whatever they're trying to accomplish. Maybe the cultists are working in conjunction with the Mockery Monarch, who is intelligent enough to understand what they're saying and kind of follow their instructions if it suits its needs, and the cultists are bringing people down and sacrificing them to the bug, trying to make more drones and using them as pawns in whatever scheme they're trying to hatch upon the city. Maybe the party is coming to a town specifically to meet someone and that person's already been turned and noticing that they've been recognized by the party, that person tries to lead them back to the Monarch and then combat ensues. You could also just use these guys as kind of dungeon denizens, have a dungeon completely occupied by mockery drones along with one monarch in one of the rooms. Maybe it was an ancient city that has kind of since fallen into the earth or has just been abandoned for many, many years. And the mockery monarch and drones have just kind of been there ever since the original denizens of the town fell into disrepair. Following that train of thought, you could even have maybe an ancient mockery monarch who might be a little bit bigger and is capable of consuming much larger creatures. Maybe he's consuming giants along with other humanoid-esque creatures, so there's a whole region that's occupied by these mockery bugs, whole towns, or maybe even a kingdom if the plague is bad enough. Maybe this one mockery monarch is giving birth to other monarchs, smaller ones that are going around and kind of spreading this disease, as it were, of mockery drones kind of taking over a whole area. 
I mean, if you really wanted to go that far with it, you could even say that this creature doesn't just affect humanoids and can also affect animals and that kind of stuff too. So you have like deer and seemingly harmless animals wandering around the forest that then have these centipede creatures leaping out of them to ambush their targets. Ultimately, I think a big part of running this creature in your game comes down to roleplay. The way that you play them and the way that you describe their creepy actions and their weird stutters and their odd way of speaking and doing things is ultimately what's going to make this encounter memorable for your players. And if you do want to use this creature in your game, as always, you can find a link to the stat block in the description below there. Right at the top, you'll see a link to a Google document, which is going to contain everything you need to run this creature in your game. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, of course you can find the Monster Manual style Photoshop stat block on the Patreon page as per usual. And while you're down there, that's where you'll also find my Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, all that good stuff. If you want to get a hold of me, Twitter is generally the best way to do that. And hopefully you found this video helpful and you can find a spot for these creatures in your campaign because they are truly terrifying and will make for something that your players will never forget. In any case, I do just want to say thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in the next video. Until then.